Welcome back to AI575 with Arrow. This is the Gasly Cup. I decided to run this first hole right off the bat, and I almost used the wrong disc. I almost used a recoil. So, uh, Glide Skip Ballista Pro. This is a line I kind of was trying to remember from the daily. It's the top of the disc in the middle of the second Wi Fi curve. Get around that rock, and I just worked out perfect. Uh, so, I didn't grind for that one at all. This is just me cycling through B tier tournaments, and. Uh, I was so happy that, <laughs> that I kind of remember that line. Um, accurate glide musket here. You can do an ace run with an accurate big skip musket, but I don't. I don't generally carry that. If I could figure out a way to, like, open up another bag slot or consolidate two other discs, uh, I actually really love the accurate uh, big skip musket for this hole in particular. But there's a lot of situations that I feel like the accurate skip musket is like a really good choice for. Um, here I'm the bottom of the middle green arrow perched on the top of, there's like a stump in the distance, like a tree, like a full tree trunk come at the top of that. Uh, and then have another uh, tap in birdie. So pretty good on the first three. Uh, must run on this one with accurate windbreak fuse for me. Uh, bottom of the bottom arrow is like on a horizontal line with the cage and it's in between the stump and the basket. And then I'm just playing the camera pan looking for my line. And I, that's right, I just hit cage on that. I was like, ah, oh, I was thinking it might go in. Um, so that's why I play the camera pan. I find that sometimes you have to make a little tiny micro adjustment at the last, like, you know, quarter second to counter something you're seeing in the camera pan. Um, here I'm bottom of the bottom arrow on the top of that actual stump. I was saying stump, but it was really a tree trunk in the past. I mean, this is with the Glide Skip Ballista Pro. I like hitting this little patch of land to go for an albatross run. It usually is safe on the back, even if you don't. As long as you don't, as long as you get enough power to not get in the in the swamp and you get on that little patch of land, that's a pretty consistent play for me if I have a right right to left wind. Otherwise, I'm probably going Glide Roll Ballista Pro and using more of the backdrop of that hole. Here, I'm always Glide Wind Ballista. Uh, aim points the bottom of the middle arrow, and I'm like right on the inside of this cave. So like, if you think of it as a circle, right there is pretty much where my aim point was. You can go back and, and see there's like a specific spot. And then if it's a right to left wind, I tend to aim, drop the aim a little bit lower than that spot to counter the wind so I get a little bit more turn. Um, but if it's a left to right wind, I might end aim at that spot or a little bit higher. So pretty good so far. I got that opening ace and uh, I think to maximize your score on Herring Woods or this tournament, you need you need those back to back eagles on five and six and then gotta run spider tree ace and my spot there i just missed it i was a little, little distracted with where i was so, um i've got a spot that's like online with the ground my aim point is the bottom of the bottom arrow on that one you'll see it when i come back around on the on the on the back nine uh, i'm gonna use like pretty much the same spot um so here accurate windbreak musket my aim spot is like cutting through horizontally the middle of the middle arrow, and then I'm doing a full send. Just really trying to end up between the rock and the spot that I am uh, to, the, to the right of this tree trunk on my left. And then uh, I'm aimed like at the bottom of the pin here, playing the camera pan. And this is kind of my second, this feels like three narrow misses, man. So harrowing four was, a metal hit, harrowing seven, I just hit the wrong spot on the tree, and then harrowing eight, uh, a, a narrow miss to the right, uh, which I which I blame on my, I didn't I didn't get the right read on the camera pan. Uh, so I was like, man, I don't know if this is gonna do it. At the time, I think the, the record was 27 down, so I was like, this is not a very good start. Um, then there, uh, my aim point was the bottom of the bottom green arrow, right at the bottom of the blue bubble. And if I hadn't hit that tree, I think I would have been in pretty good position to make an albatross run here. So I was a little, a little upset about that. Not like genuinely upset, but I was like, ah oh, man, <laughs> shucks. Um, <laughs> so then I run this with the uh, accurate windbreak river and this is really just a uh, shoot from the hip, you know, with my knowledge of the river's flight pattern, seeing if I could Make sure I didn't get collision with those trees. It was the higher priority, so I could guarantee eagle if I didn't get the albatross, which is much less likely, but keep rolling here. You're going to see me use the same aim point here. Bottom of the bottom green arrow, the bottom of the blue bubble. 
uh, and then uh, kind of a full disc Anheuser with the uh, this is a light glide Ballista Pro. And this is I think a better gap, but I still didn't hit my my main gap either time. Was, there's a gap between the trees to the right of where I just went through that I try to play for. So I was considering doing a forehand here, um, but I decided to go with the with the backhand line. I definitely am not playing for like an albatross here. I'm just trying to get it into the clearing to have an easy eagle and. The bigger thing that I was worried about is just getting collision with these trees. And I still did, but that's why I decided to go with the Light Glide Ballista Pro. I was kind of thinking I might get collision that even if I didn't, that would be a good line. So good thing here is I'm hoping that I'm not going to get collision with these trees, that uh, Pear hasn't updated this. And it seemed like he hadn't, so I'm just treating this as if there's no tree in my way at all right now. And trying not to overshoot this is a little bit of a downhill shot from the clearing around. It's like the clearing is almost like a little mini valley. Um, so slightly, slightly downhill. And I almost hit the top band. It's almost a little bit too much juice, but it worked out. So keep this uh, eagle string going. And uh, yeah, same main point as before, kind of horizontally splitting the middle arrow. And there's a tree in the background that's, that's what I'm vertically lining up with. Once again, trying to end up between that. I was a little worried I was gonna end up in the swamp there, but that's about a perfect drive. 168 feet. If I could do that every time, this would feel more like um, uh, Crow's Nest 9. So uh, feeling pretty doable here. And I think what I was trying to do here was use the bottom of the green arrow at the bottom of the pin. And then I decided to do a more... Yeah, that's where I was. So then I decided to do a more conventional. This is what I tend to do with these. Anything up to like maybe 175 feet. So I'm on the left side of the top band. And then my power point is a little bit less than the halfway point between the first and second Wi-Fi curves. And I just sneak it in over the top. I was like, yeah, I was like, that was, uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to get that one when I, when I released, I was like, I don't know if I was right. Okay. So here aim point is the bottom of the bottom arrow. You can see I'm right on the line at like the bottom of the tree trunk there. And the top of the disc is just a smidgen below the second Wi-Fi curve. And then that's just a boom. Hit that one. So that's three eagles in a row plus that ace. I was feeling so good about that spider tree ace. Um, and I think at this point, my personal best on this was 26 down. So I really was just chasing, I think Lonely Belgian and d -Bars both had 27s on this. Uh, so here, same aim point as before. Uh, glide went ballista, so that's the bottom of the bottom arrow, uh, or actually no, it's the bottom of the middle arrow, in in the in the eye of the needle, there, and uh, pretty consistent shot for me. Uh, if any of these are not, if you're struggling with them, I you know recommend just practicing them in the practice function until you until you can kind of dial these in. So here I get the left to right wind, so I don't like the forehand line on these winds, so I go the backhand route, uh, roll glide ballista pro. Uh, almost full disc, not quite full disc, uh, Anheuser. And trying to just get around these trees. I like using this backdrop. If you don't get far enough on that backdrop with the roll, you can kind of roll back into the into the swamp. Um, but I, I like the, the, the roll function on that drive because I don't think you're as likely to go, to, to go uh, OB long on that hole. So... That's my go-to. I'm glad I got to show you, yeah, but both my go-to for the forehand and the backhand lines on that hole. Uh, okay, so in this wind, this two wind, specifically it's like two wind at like 10, 30. Um, bottom of the bottom green arrow is like just to the left side of the cage on that same horizontal line as the cage. And then I'm not quite full power here and playing the camera pan and I just sneak it in on the left side. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. Look at that card. Six blue in a row. Oh, man. So I'm like, dude, if I birdie out, I was like, oh, man, if I just birdie out, I'm going to do I'm gonna do 28 down. That's insane. Um, so, you know, I'm not trying anything crazy here. It's just the top of the disc was at the top of the second Wi-Fi curve there. And I was on a horizontal line with that same stump I aimed at before. And I get the tap in. I was like, oh, no risk of spit out there. <clears throat> kind of considered running it here again. I was like, but then I was like, no, dude, if I, if I like ruin a 28 that I could have just birdied out on, it would feel so dumb. Um, 
So I just decided to play it safe and I still almost messed it up. I, I hit this, but this is why I like the accurate glide musket on this line. Cause if you hit that stone and that's really the only stone that I'm at risk of, um, one, you can still do a rotate the world putt if you, if you end up trapped behind it. Um, but I think more times than not, I'm going to get a decent bounce off of the, sc the stone off of the scone. I almost said it bounce off the scone. No big deal. Um, so here I decide with this three win, if there's a rock on the other side of that first tree on the left, that if you get it just right, you can get a skip into the basket. So I decided to go for it because it's a pretty safe play. If you hit the rock and get stuck, no worries. I just missed it right there. Uh, but if you don't get the rock at all, then you end up pretty much where I end up. So I tried to go for it, didn't quite get it, but still. 28 down on the Gasly Cup. I was over the moon with this. Um, yeah, this is. I think this is going to be pretty tough to, to match or surpass. Uh, but thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you guys soon on the next one.